Hi everyone, and thank you for watching my first video of the year. So to get the year started, I wanted to make a staple blouse. I do enjoy a lot of steampunk and I enjoy a lot of Lolita and Simplicity is coming out with some really great Lolita style patterns right now. And I feel like this is a really versatile blouse that I can interchange between both of the genres as well as maybe use it for a few other different projects. So we're going to be working with the Simplicity Pattern 8444. I'm going to be doing the Blouse View A. You can see on the back all the different styles that you can make with this one pattern and it's going to have all the information that you're going to need for this project. So I'm going to use a cotton type fabric. It's going to show me my notions for thread, the buttons, the bias tape, and the elastic. I'm going to be doing a size 16. These sizes aren't the same as ready to wear sizes. And it's best to choose a size that's close to your personal measurements. Also for this blouse at the bottom, it's going to need some trim. So you're going to need some one inch gathered lace and some one fourth wide inch satin ribbon. And then at the very bottom, it'll give you the estimate of what the finish length is going to be. So that'll also help determine what size you're going to need. And then here I have laid out everything that I'm using on my project. The lace that I'm using is slightly smaller than the one inch that I needed, but it still worked out. I think it's about three fourths of an inch. The last portion that we're going to look at at our pattern is what pieces we're going to need to cut out. So you're just going to look for the view A pieces, which is one through seven, and then it'll show you what these pieces look like. I personally don't like to cut my patterns because they're really, really expensive. So I like to just use tissue paper and I trace out the pattern that I need. That way if I ever need a different size, I can definitely go back and use the same one instead of buying a whole new pattern for a different size. So here I have traced out all the pieces that I'm going to need with all the information on them that I need to know. You're going to start pinning down your pieces and cutting them out. You want to make sure you line up your pattern with the grain line, which is usually the large arrow that's indicated. And the other piece you just want to be mindful of is the back piece, which will be placed on a center fold. And then you're going to cut out the interfacing for your number two and your number five. Last is number seven, and this piece is just indicating the length of elastic that you're going to be cutting out. So you're just going to measure out two pieces of elastic. I'm just going to make all the little notch marks and all the little dot marks on all of my pattern pieces. And for all the little notches, I'm just going to make a tiny little slit. It's just to indicate where the pieces line up. I'm going to start with my two front pieces. You're going to do a base hem of 3 inches around the neckline and then we're going to sew the darts closed. So you're going to base stitch around both of the necklines with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. For your dart, you're going to match up your dots and starting at the top dot is where you're going to start hemming your dart closed with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Both pieces will be done the same way. Then we're going to open these pieces up. We're going to iron down the seam toward the center. Grab your ribbon and we're going to cut eight half inch pieces. These will be the little hooks for the ribbon in the back. Taking your back pattern piece, you're going to grab one ribbon folded in half and your dots are going to indicate where to place each piece. You want to tuck your little ribbon pieces in about one eighth of an inch and you're going to pin it down. So you should have four pieces on each side of your back. And then you can go ahead and sew your darts and you're just going to follow the angle of the dots as best as you can. Then we're going to iron down these seams as well and you want to iron them down facing the middle. At the top of the dart you're going to take the extra thread and you're just going to tie a couple knots and that way it'll make a smoother transition instead of making it a point. 
we're going to grab our two front pieces. Go ahead and pin your sides and your top shoulder seams together, making sure that your nice sides are facing toward each other. And go ahead and sew this with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. For the seams that you've just made, you're going to go ahead and iron those open. Next we're going to start working on the placket on the number 3 piece. So I'm just going to make two little marks where the first fold is going to go. And you're going to fold this toward the inside of your shirt. Iron this down so it's nice and neat. And then you're going to do another fold and you're going to iron this down as well. We're going to sew down the open edge and across the top. Go ahead and use a 1 16th inch seam allowance so that you're nice up right against the edge. I'm going to hem the bottom of my shirt now by folding over 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to iron this down. We're going to sew this down with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Fold this over again, another 3 8 inches. And then you're going to sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. It should just be right before the edge. I'm then going to grab my number 2 piece and we're going to start working on the right side placket. After you've made all your marks and notches, you're going to open it up and you're going to place your inner facing on one side. And we're going to iron on your inner facing. You want to make sure that you have all your markings on both of your pieces, making sure that they're opposite. We're going to add our lace and you're going to fold over at the top dot and at the bottom dot and you're going to fold the edges of your lace over the top. Since my lace is a little smaller, I'm moving it in a little bit but you should be able to line up the edge of your lace with the edge of your pattern piece. And then same thing, you're going to add another piece of lace on the opposite side and you want to make sure the lace is facing toward the middle on both of your pieces. Go ahead and sew the lace down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So you should have something that looks like this. You're going to take that piece we just worked on and you're going to fold it over top of the other piece making sure that they're opposite. We're going to pin the side without the notch on the top and we're going to be sewing this down as well as the bottom of the piece closed. Go ahead and use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to snip off the corner for the side we just sewed. Go ahead and take a seam ripper and you're going to take out about 3 eighths of an inch of the seam that you just sewed at the bottom. So it'll kind of look like this. 
Go ahead and take the lace side of your placket. You're gonna lay it against the outside opening of your shirt. This is gonna be the opposite side of the placket that we sewed down on the other. Go ahead and pin these edges together. And we're gonna sew this with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and flip your placket inside out. I'm going to make sure that the lace is facing outward on both sides and I'm going to iron the inside seams toward the metal. This will help give it a little bit more of a crisp fold. Go ahead and iron that outside fold down. And then from the inside you're going to fold over 3 eighths of an inch on that outside edge and we're going to iron this down as well. So when you close it, it should perfectly match that other seam that we've made. And then we can slip stitch this close. I like to pin this down because it helps stop the fabric moving around too much while I'm doing my stitches. Take your needle and thread, making a knot at the end, and you're gonna slip stitch this starting at the bottom all the way to the top. In case you don't know how, I will leave a video down below where I break down how to do a slip stitch. So once you finish, you should have something that looks like this. We're gonna grab our collar piece, which is number five, and this will be pretty similar to what we just did with the placket. You're gonna start by making sure you have marks on both of your pieces, and then we're gonna iron down the interfacing to one side. You're gonna grab your lace, and we're gonna cut two pieces. Same thing, you wanna match up the edge of your lace with the dots that are indicated, holding over the edge to the top. And you want both lace pieces to point toward the center. Sew this on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So just like your placket, you should have something that looks like this. Grab your second piece and we're gonna lay that over top. So for this one, we're gonna sew down the top edge and then you wanna sew down both of the short ends. Go ahead and snip off the corners on both sides. Go ahead and take your seam ripper and you're just going to take out a few seams to get that 3 8 inch opening. So grabbing your shirt, you're going to match the lace side of your collar to the neck of the outside of your shirt. There are dots and notches that will help you line these up. So go ahead and match them and pin it down. Sew this together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Grab some scissors and you're going to make little tiny slits into this seam. Make sure not to cut past the thread of your seam. You want to cut right before it. This is really important because it's going to relax the fabric and help the whole collar lay naturally. For the open edge of your collar, you're going to fold it down 3 8 of an inch. Make sure to move the lace out of the way as you go. going to go ahead and iron these seams toward the middle once again for a nice crisp edge and then you can continue to turn out your collar mm -hmm. 
go ahead and tuck in the edges so they're nice and neat, making sure that the seams are hidden in the middle. And you're gonna pin this down. Once again, we're gonna slip stitch this closed. So here's what we have so far. We're gonna start working on your sleeve, so you're gonna go ahead and grab your bias tape. The pattern itself has an indication where the bias tape will go. I did mark it on my sleeves, but you can't really see it. Bias tape is really flexible, so it should be able to do this curve smoothly. On the second piece, make sure that it is the opposite side because you do not want to make two of the same. We're gonna sew both sides of the bias tape down with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. So this has created the channel for our elastic. Go ahead and place some safety pins on both ends of your elastic to start pushing the elastic through. Make sure to pin down the other side to the fabric so that, that way it doesn't get lost inside. And you're going to do this to both of your sleeves. You want to fold your sleeves making sure the nice sides are together and the casing is on the outside and we're going to sew down the short straight edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. To create the gathers for our sleeves, we're going to do two base stitch lines across the outside edge. You should have two notches that you've cut where you're going to start and stop. One side will have one notch and the other side should have two notches. Before you start sewing, you want to make sure that you leave a tail of thread because this is going to be important when you start your gathering. The first base stitch you're going to make is going to be a 1 8 inch seam allowance. When you get to your finishing notch, you want to make sure to pull out your thread so that you have a tail on that end as well. So you should have about 2-3 to three inches of thread hanging over on both sides. And then we're going to do the same thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're going to gather our sleeves. You're going to grab both threads on the top and you're just going to gently pull. This will automatically start to gather your sleeve. Use your other hand to help guide the gathers down and you can always switch it over and pull from the other side. Just make sure that you're pulling the top ones as well. Go ahead and iron your seams open and then we're going to hem the bottom of our sleeves. So it's the same way that you've hemmed your shirt, you're going to fold it over 3 8 of an inch. going to do a 1 8 inch seam allowance to sew that down. And then you're going to fold it again another 3 8 inches. And you're going to sew this down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. Your sleeves are done, so we're going to add these to our shirt. Go ahead and flip your shirt inside out. And then you want to flip your sleeves right side out. 
The way to determine which sleeve goes on which side is you're going to match up the notches that we used as start and stop indicators and you're going to match it up to your sleeve holes which should have matching notches. So just determine which one goes where and then you should be able to use the dots, the notches and the seams to line it up and you're going to pin these together. We're going to sew these down with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to grab the number 2 placket piece. We're going to use this to measure out where our buttons are going to go on our placket. So I'm just going to add little dots where they should be. My machine is capable of making buttons so I'm going to use my button foot and I'm going to add all my buttonholes. I like to go over it twice just to make sure it's a nice sturdy stitch. You're going to use your seam ripper and you're going to gently cut open the slit. Make sure to take your time because if you go too fast, these things are so sharp that they can definitely cut farther than you want them to. So go ahead and open up all your buttonholes. And I'm going to line up both of my plackets as best as I can. I'm going to mark in between each buttonhole to where I want the button to be. Go ahead and grab a needle and thread and you're going to sew on your buttons. And at this point your shirt is nearly complete. All that we have left is to add the ribbon on the back. So whatever amount of ribbon you had left after you cut your half inch pieces, that's what you're going to use to lace the back of your shirt. And you're just going to go ahead and lace it as if you were lacing a shoe starting from the top working your way down. I'm going to take a lighter and I'm just going to burn the edges just a tiny bit that way they don't come unraveled. And you can tie that off and your shirt is done. I really really loved making this. This shirt definitely fits like a glove to me. I can't wait to make more in different colors. I think black and brown would be really great staples. I hope this at least helped you kind of figure out how to read a pattern or even seeing how to do some of these steps. I just overall really hope that this just helped you understand a simplicity pattern a little better, but I know it can be really intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. This shirt did take me a couple tries before I finally figured out what the instructions were trying to tell me, so please do not think that you're alone. So once again, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will be back again soon with more. Thank you so much. Bye.